Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Just three days ago, in an interview with NBC, Congressman John Lewis of Georgia called Donald Trump illegitimate. Then he followed up by saying he won't attend the inauguration. Well, Trump responded with a series of bellicose tweets. The cable networks went wall to wall with their coverage of all this. And the rest is history, of course, and you've been watching it. This is a fight Democrats started, and they seem to enjoy it so far. Republicans seem to enjoy it, too. But what's the greater point of all of this? Will attacks like the one from Congressman Lewis help the Democrats win elections going forward? And that's not an idle question. Given that in the past eight years under Barack Obama, the Democratic Party has lost more than 1,000 office holders nationwide. Joining us now is someone who wants to lead the Democrats into the future, former Fox contributor Jamu Green, who is running for DNC chair. Jamu, thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening, Tucker. So you were asked about this um, uh, over the weekend on Fox and Friends, uh, asked about Congressman Lewis's statement, and you described what happened in November as the alleged election. I think I'm quoting you exactly, the alleged election. By that, did you mean that it's an election that didn't actually take place or that we should pretend didn't happen? Or what did you mean? As someone who wants to lead the Democratic Party, what's your position on that? Here's, I think, the position of not just Democrats or Republicans, just like I said that morning, Americans. Something happened in this election with Russia. Something happened uh -huh. that was so significant that the Democratic members of Congress that got that classified briefing stormed out of that room. And we may never know what that is if it stays classified, but we, we all have those questions. And, and to your opening, Tucker, I don't, I don't think anybody enjoys this. I don't think anybody likes this. This is an attack on our democracy. And Donald Trump had an opportunity after he was the president-elect to start to try to heal the wounds from the election. And instead, he chose to take us in a different direction and continue his type of okay. just baseless attacks. But someone right, got, like John Lewis, so, who is uh, the Navy deemed so respected an American that they named right. a ship after him, to see right. what Donald Trump is doing on Martin Luther King Day, right. uh, no one is standing for it. Not Democrats, okay. not Republicans, not anybody who cares about the future of this country. So he's the one congressman out of 435 you're not allowed to attack. But That's my not question what I to said. You, though, That's ridiculous. The, the, my, my question to you is, though, if you're elected chair of the Democratic Party... I intend to be. And, and you intend to be. Your line to Democrats, when you go across the country to the Jefferson Jackson dinner or whatever, you're going to say, we would have won that election if only Vladimir Putin, in ways we can't explain or be specific about, hadn't intervened. No. So your understanding is... Hillary lost because of Putin. I think that's what you just said. No, that's not what I said. And so don't put words in my mouth, Tucker. There are lots of I'm things asking. the Democratic Party needs to address. Certainly, we have to find better ways of communicating our issues in a way that are going to inspire communities to uh, turn out for us. We have to make sure that we are defending our policies in the same way that Donald Trump was so effective as a communicator. We have to be able right. to do the same thing. And we will do it and we'll win with by telling the truth, which is the opposite of what we saw from the Republican in the, in the race in 2016. But we have a lot of work okay, to so be done. Was, we have to bring young people in. We have to make sure that the infrastructure of the party has the resources that they need. This is not just a, a, a one issue uh, right. situation. And so I'm but, not going to play a game one, and okay, simplify no, no, it with it. you, Tucker. I, and I, I don't want you to simplify it. I want you to explain it because you're running for this. So the first thing you mentioned in that long litany was we need to get the communities out. Now, one community that did not come out for you is white voters. Hillary Clinton won 37 percent of the white vote. That's the lowest number any Democrat running for president has received in more than 30 years. So it's clearly a massive problem for her. Do you see that as a problem? And what would you do to rectify, to get white voters to vote Democrat again? Well, I, I think that there were some strategic mistakes that were made as far as where we were going to communicate, what types of messages were going to be communicated. It's a campaign. I get it. I'm not going to you know, say that we need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we need to make better decisions when it comes to how we tell the Democratic Party's story. And to make sure that whether you're a white working class voter or a low income African American voter or middle class working family, all of us, we are going to be harmed 
harmed, drastically harmed by right. the policies that this administration okay. is clearly intending to put in place. So and it is Simone, about communication, because okay, they, they beat us at communication. That so we here's, know. Here's a, here's a famous and skilled communicator. Her name is Simone Sanders. She was, in fact, the spokeswoman for Bernie Sanders, kind of a big deal. And she said this, and I'm quoting on CNN, in this November after the election, in my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. Do you agree with that? Look, I, I think that it is great to have people like Simone's passion and, you know, certainly the young voters that, that were attracted to Bernie Sanders. They are part of the Democratic Party, and we need to find ways where everybody feels welcomed. I, I don't but wait agree a second. I'm, so, with I'm sorry. I, what do you think of that? We don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. Do you think she should have said that? Do you think that's an okay thing to say? And do you agree with it? Well, clearly I'm in the race, Tucker, so I, I very specifically think we need to move green leading the Democratic Party right now. No, no, no don't, don't and, be silly. Ask the, answer the question. I mean, she said that's we don't need white into the people. Race. Okay, but hold on. This is not a fringe person. This is Simone Sanders, who you know. We don't need white people leading the party. Now, I don't even need to play the thought experiment. What would happen if someone on the Republican side said we don't need black people leading the Republican Party? That would be bad, and I would denounce it. Will you denounce that? Is that okay that she said that? And do you agree with her? Look, just because we have the same hairstyle um, doesn't mean that uh, I agree with everything that she says. And certainly, well, I think you should have Simone on your show. Ask her. What we need are people who no, wait, understand so the Democratic wait, Party on. from inside I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm throwing like it up I really do. slow for you to hit. I'm asking I don't need you, you to talk do you slow think to me, Tucker. Oh, oh. No, no, to throw it up slow, the pitch, so you can hit it. Do you think it's okay to say we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party? And I'm expecting you're going to say that's an appalling thing to say. You can't say that about an entire racial group. Go it, ahead. It's not the right. It's not the right message that needs to be out there right but now. But is it wrong to say that? What do you mean not the right message? Is it is it a good thing to say or is that an immoral thing? I mean, can you imagine saying that yourself? It's not what like I believe. That? It's not what I believe. Okay. So I don't know why I'm having a conversation with you about what another african-american woman said you, well i explained we it to you at the beginning we don't think and say the same well, things of course i'm not suggesting that like. hillary clinton who's not an african-american woman said in april during the campaign she said and i think i'm quoting her we need to recognize white people our own privilege and practice humility and i thought well, that's sort of a big generalization do you think unemployed machinists in ohio need to recognize their privilege or the children of oxycon addicts in appalachia need to recognize their privilege Come what on, do you think? Tucker, of, what, you is, are, is there a reason white voters abandoning the Democratic Party? Because maybe they feel attacked by things like that. Is that a crazy thing to say? Look, Tucker, you're you're a really smart man, and you understand. I'm asking obvious you, questions. You understand nuance and communication, and you do a lot of critical thinking. Trying to boil that statement down into something that is an attack on a voter in a certain state, that, that's just ridiculous. I, I'm tired of these types of conversations. And, you know, really? This frankly, is, I'm quoting Hillary this Clinton is the type here. Of conversation I'm not saying out of context. Makes, this is a real conversation, you know, This actually. is what makes people opt out of my politics. Question. And part of why we lost is because people weren't inspired. They were disgusted. They were Wait, disgusted by the so discussion asking, in the 2016 election. So my asking what Hillary Clinton meant when she said that in public is, quote, part of the reason people are opting out of politics. I'm quoting Look. a candidate you supported and asking you to comment on what she said. And you're accusing me of being divisive. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> Do you think you're divisive, Tucker? Do you think you're in the I'm you asking neither? you, <laughs> which I'm side asking of it are you, you if that's a fair thing to say. And my own view, it as is, you can probably tell from my tone, is that's an awful thing to say about people based on their skin color. It is absolutely fair to acknowledge that there are issues of white privilege out there that concern very specific communities, and they're based in reality. But it is also absolutely fair and, and something that I think Democrats understand about the pain that all Americans all Americans are going through. But I'm not going to sit here and, and have this conversation that conservatives, Republicans, want the Democratic Party to be having and to divide us in this way. Oh, no, no, because no, no, actually, no. we are united. We are united in what are we you? need from then an economic fairness standpoint. We are united in what okay. we need to protect women's rights, which are coming under attack before okay. this now administration the even takes so let's get step specific. into the White House. Okay. We are united. I'm not going to let you divide okay. us along those lines. Because <laughs> It's not as simple as that, and quite frankly, Actually, it's not as stupid as that. Uh huh. I was quoting Hillary Clinton and asking you what you thought of it, and you started calling me names. And I'm merely trying I to get your you view, names. but you retreated immediately into talking points. So let me get specific Don't again and see so if you can handle. Don't be so sensitive. Let, let me see if Come you on. can respond. You've got if you can stand. respond, if you can respond to this one. So you're saying you're looking for an economic message that speaks to the needs 
of the middle class and of working people of all colors. And I applaud you for attempting to find that message. So for eight years, President Obama has been telling us he wants to lower drug prices because they're too high, right? And that was part of the purpose of Obamacare, but it didn't work. As you know, they're still too high, right? Right. A very fast way to do that would be to reimport drugs from Canada. Donald Trump is calling for this. Why in eight years did Barack Obama not call for that? Barack Obama called for so many fixes to Obamacare. No, and that's not you Obamacare. understand you understand what Republicans did when that man was first inaugurated. They said on day one they were going to obstruct. And they successfully did in many ways. He and the administration were very clear. There are lots of things we need to still fix with health care. There are lots of problems. What about reimporting drugs drug at a cheaper prices. price from Canada? But if you don't have Why somebody for that? in Congress, if you don't have any leadership on the other side who understands they need to put the American people first instead of trying to destroy oh, government because they Jimmo, didn't like silly. Barack Obama, this is silly. That, is, that is what is wrong. Come that on. is you're, what you're, keeps you're people disenfranchised. Look, I don't want to relitigate it, but if you're going to generalizations that aren't true, Democrats held all three branches <laughs> of government when, when <laughs> Obama came into office. Look, Come I'm, on, I'm just asking. Here that's, you have Donald. Tran here, that's transparently false. Here you have the Donald obstruction Trump. that the Republican okay, Party the did to fixing Obamacare, to making sure that we could continue okay. to get well, healthcare in this country better. Can you just answer the question? Or are you just going to pass on? It? Was abysmal. Do you and know what it if, is? If you deny it, if you deny it. That's on you. That's on you. You and your I'm therapist can talk about for that. One sec. I'm not denying that Republicans tried to stop Barack Obama's agenda, and sometimes it was justified and others it wasn't. But I'm <laughs> asking in this time, very all of the time. Fine. I'm unjustified. asking you a very specific question, and I'm asking you, do you agree with Donald Trump's plan to reimport drugs at a lower price from Canada? American drugs have been sold in Canada at a lower price, bringing them back. The pharmaceutical companies are against it. Obama did not push for it. Trump is now pushing for it. What's your response to that? Are you for that or against it? Simple question. I haven't seen the, the exact plan you're talking about, so I'm not going to play this gotcha game. I'm not going to sit here gotcha and cheerlead, saying, cheerlead somebody who not? is refusing to even celebrate Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Day and understand that he Why do you is, always bring it back to race? I'm asking that's you That's where the economics. segment started, Tucker. You're the one who picked the topic. I didn't. I'm, I'm asking you about health care. I'm asking you about lowering drug prices and Trump. Look, I'm not endorsing everything Trump does. I'm just saying here he's doing something that overlaps with what Democrats have wanted to do for a long time, decades. And he's saying, yeah, let's do it. And I'm asking you, are you for it or not? Are you so partisan? That you can't just say, yeah, you know, I don't like Trump, but that's a good idea. But you, know you what? can't. Can you? I am the last person that is going to cheerlead some small little one off from Donald Trump because I am looking at the bigger picture of what this man is about to do to this country and well, how responding the how to the waves of people who are okay. terrified, who are, who are fearful, the women uh -huh. who are marching the day okay. of the, the inauguration and the men who are joining them because they understand thin, Jimu. This we is have not to very resist. Impressive, we have, have to, to resist. All right, well, good luck with that. I, thanks for, I, thanks right for joining back us. At you, my friend. I, I appreciate it. Well, we're less than 100 hours away from Donald Trump becoming the president of the United States. Fatality. Ah, one of my favorite segments, King for a Day. We always ask if you had absolute power and you could do one thing to improve this country, what would it be? And it's a measure of how creative our viewers are that we got answers like this from Greg. I would create another day called Fleur's Day for an eight day week and let all other countries adapt. Which is the best part. That includes you, Canada. Bob Stark wrote this, world peace, said the beauty queen. Also sunsets and puppies. I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, Zezel Dog wrote, deport Tucker Carlson. But to where? That is the question. BK Sparty wrote, require all American flags become coated with a clear flame retardant. Problem solved. On to health care. <laughs> T wrote, I would make all the snowflakes live through the Depression for one month, which actually would work for sure. It may happen. And finally, Parsky tweeted this, I'd require all employers to provide donuts and coffee for their employees, which just proves those who think small actually get what they wish for. Keep the feedback coming. At Tucker Carlson, O'Reilly. Now it's time for Twitter Storm, our nightly forecast of social media's most intense weather patterns. It's always stormy on Twitter. Well, tonight, a dust storm of desperation is sweeping across Hollywood over the video we just showed you of celebrities, some of whom you've never seen before, pleading with electors 
not to vote for Trump in less than a week. Twitter, of course, had some thoughts on this. Dan Singer wrote, quote, watch this pathetic video. It makes a nice trivia game. How many of these losers can you name? I think I got three, five counting maybes. Huh. CLS Carpenter wrote this. Martin Sheen is the only one of these so-called celebrities I've ever heard of. And frankly, I presumed that he was dead. That is mean, by the way. Elroy said, well, it worked for the general election. Oh, wait, never mind. Maybe America doesn't care that much what celebrities think. And finally, Capital Steps tweeted this. Yay, we were hoping celebrities would keep telling us how to vote even after the election. Well, your dream has come true because they are. That's tonight's Twitter storm. Up next. We're joined now from San Diego by Enrique Moronias. He's founder of the pro-immigrant group Border Angels and a fierce critic of Trump's immigration plan. Enrique, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Sure. Glad to be here. So I've read a lot about uh, your views on this. Point. and They're pretty conventional on, on the left. You think that his immigration plans are wrong and mean and immoral, and, and you've described him as a racist. What's interesting, though, about you is that you are not just a citizen of the U.S., but a citizen of Mexico. In fact, you describe yourself in your bio as a proud American, but I'm quoting now, but an even prouder Mexican. So I think it's fair to ask you this question. If you think that Trump's border security plans are immoral, what do you make of Mexico's border laws, which are much tougher than anything President Trump has suggested? Well, I'm in the majority of people's opinions about Donald Trump, and I think it is very inhumane you know, to build a wall the wall that exists right now between the United States and Mexico covers a third of the border and has led to more than 11,000 deaths. As you know, there's no wall with Mexico and Guatemala. They do have strict laws, just like the United States has strict laws. They don't have a deportation police like Donald Trump wants to have. They don't have people rounding up and raiding people and, and, and not allowing people to come in because of their religion or the country they come from, like Trump wants to do. Huh. So what Donald Trump has said, stated, and lived by are very, uh, very racist, very uh, uh, xenophobic uh, uh, lifestyle and, and his messages. And, and it's a very, very sad state of affairs. And I travel quite a bit. And well, it's really an embarrassment to the whole world to have Donald well, Trump. Well, you must not you must not travel much to Mexico because they do have a every deportation week, every force. Week. OK, well, then you should pay closer attention to what they're doing in the southern border. They not only no control the border, foolish. but really. OK, well, no. What percentage do you think of clemency requests they grant. Someone comes into Mexico from Guatemala or Salvador or Honduras and says, I need amnesty, I would like to stay. In the U.S., we grant about 50 percent of those. How many do you think Mexico grants? What the U.S. grants about 4 percent. The U.S. grants about 4 percent. No, that's actually Mexico, 49. You, that's 49. It's 49 percent, no. just for your information. Well, no, I, 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 Tucker, just, just for a second, I, I just realized that there's Fox and there's facts. For a moment there, I forgot I was on Fox. But <laughs> as far as Mexico is concerned, Funny. you Look can go down this... this you can, no, I know it. I, this is what I do every day. Uh -huh. As you can, when you go to Mexico, the reason you have a lot of asylum seekers going through Mexico is because you get a 21-day right. pass. They go from southern Mexico to northern Mexico. They apply for asylum on the Tijuana border or the Mexicali border, northern cities of Mexico. Most are turned away by the United States. They're right. allowed okay. to come in. They don't have a family relative, and then they're deported. And this is something okay. that a lot of people don't realize. Okay, so so let's let's get just let's get fact based. Okay, so in Mexico, yeah, I, I, I illegal illegal immigration is a felony in Mexico, punishable by up to two years in prison. Repeated attempts can get you ten years in prison. People who aid illegal aliens in Mexico are also subject to felony charges. None of that is true in the United States. Mexican law says that Mexico can deport illegal aliens quote who are detrimental to economic or national interests, who violate Mexican law, or and I'm quoting now who are not physically or mentally healthy or lack the means to sustain themselves? Are those humane laws? Are those racist laws? U.S. US has laws like that, and, and they're not illegal aliens. They're undocumented people. Actually, and there's 250 federal, million undocumented federal, people in the world. In the okay. world. Federal US only law has 11 million. describes them as, oh, hold on, just since you're so knowledgeable. Our federal documents, the IRS, for example, describes people who are in this country illegally as illegal aliens. So it's not some racist term I'm throwing around. It's a term that the Obama administration used for eight years. So let's, let's just but stop. But the thing is, before they were called wetbacks, people were called okay. three-fifths okay. of a okay. human I, being. I, I'm using, and they changed okay, the whatever. terminology. But, uh, first of all, they were never called well, words matter. human words being matter. by anybody, by anybody. I don't know where you're getting, you're, you're conflating two things. But you're not answering my question, which is, in Mexico, it is a felony to go into Mexico illegally. And I, look, I'm not here to beat up a Mexico. I'm really saying, as someone who says that he's more proud to be Mexican than American and is holding the U.S. to this standard, why don't you answer the question? Do you agree with the fact it's a felony to go into Mexico illegally? No. 
And the thing is that I, I've never said I'm more proud to be Mexican than, than the United States of America. I'm a it dual says national. right here, I'm I love reading both your countries. bio. Your bio, which I read about four minutes ago, said, quote, I'm a proud American and an even prouder I'm very prouder proud to be Mexican. American and to be Mexican. Even and, and prouder to any, be Mexican well, than I don't American. know which bio you you're reading, in, but, but I'm very proud of my Mexican border heritage. border angel site, very which proud. I just read. Yeah. Okay, but, so my question very is, proud. if you're even prouder to be Mexican than you are to be American, then clearly your main interest is in preserving the well-being of that country. Because you just said, I'm prouder to be Mexican than to be American. So that's fine. I didn't say that, but the thing that. is that, it that says both right countries are great. I don't want to debate something if more, that's true. If, if more, I think I know the way I feel and what I say. I know. I don't know what you say. You know. Okay. Well, and I'm I telling you, I love readers. both countries. <laughs> okay. I love both countries. <laughs> Whatever. I, okay. If more people have the dual nationality like a lot of countries okay. have, then you could be treating people with dignity okay. and respect. Building bridges, not walls. 11,000 deaths nobody of, of is migrants against, because of the wall? Nobody, nobody is against treating people with dignity. And, and I'm not Well, here Donald to, Trump apparently is. Look at the way he's talked look, about women, I'm his asking, assaults on women, I'm asking you his attacks serious, on Muslims. I'm asking you adult I, I'm questions. I'm telling you facts. And I'm you're, telling you okay, facts. Okay, then, then answer this question. What is morally the problem with a country controlling who comes across its borders? It seems to me that's a prerequisite for being a country. You're not a country unless you have control of your borders. So why exactly is a wall immoral? You may say well, it's hard to build a wall, impossible to build a wall. That, that's fine. But as a theoretical matter, why is it wrong to control who comes into your country? Because a lot of the people that are coming into the country, and as you know, Mexican undocumented migration has dropped 40%. Mexicans are no longer the anything. largest group. No, it's Central America, but it does have to okay, do I'm aware of that. because the U.S. policy, the U.S. policy, is what drives a lot of these people out. The intervention in Central America, the demand by the drugs by the American public, the intervention in the Middle East by President Bush, those things cause people to leave. There's a consequence to those so actions. So you're saying so you so can't just on. you can't okay, okay, if you're going to you're going to get involved in other people's policies, right. you've got to pay the price. Okay, so you're saying and that price might be that they're driving Amer people out. So because the American government, and, and I think it's important because you're, you're representing a lot of people when you say this, a lot of people have your views, but they never fully articulate them, and you now are articulating them, and I think it's helpful to know what you think. You're saying because the U.S. government has behaved in the immoral ways you just listed, and because its citizens take drugs, that it has no right to control its borders? Is that what you're saying? That appears to be what you're saying. No, I'm saying that that has, that has a great deal to do why people are leaving these countries. The countries they're the leaving, whether it's Mexico or else, they should that, do, do more to keep the people there as well. But right okay. now, you, you, you invite me to talk about Trump's policies, no, his I, immoral and, policies. And, and they are predicated on the idea, a very simple idea. We can debate about how you get there, but the idea is really clear. You have a right as a country to control who comes into your country. And you're saying, no, okay. you don't because America is I, I immoral and because it's people. T the, does a country have a right to control who comes in or out? It's, Mexico yes. apparently does. Does America? And you're, you see, does it? Yeah, the United States of America does as well. But you should do it in a right. humane manner. There's no line for these people that come into the country. So when they say, oh, they should get a line, there is no line. They don't qualify for okay. a visa. I'm, I'm sorry, 11, for someone people works on this for a living, you, you don't seem to have thought this through very much, I have to say. I've thought it through very much. Every really single day, have. I think it through. I'm at the border okay. almost every day. I spend so half my time it, in Mexico. I'm very familiar okay. with the issue. You don't seem to have learned much. So would it be okay for the U.S. government to have an absolute barrier along the border and the U.S. government to determine who comes into this country from a foreign country. That's an okay thing for you. You think that's all right? Only if the U.S. were to stay out of other countries' business, which it doesn't. It consumes more oh, drugs so, than any other so country. Be, it, it gets involved so, in policies of okay, other countries okay. and civil wars. I hope, people, and, are and, I hope and, people are listening to you because I oh, think you oh, speak for oh, many Oh, yeah, the, the majority left. of the people actually, 67% okay. of the U.S. public supports humane immigration I, policies. I, I doubt right they now, what you just said. Right now. Right. Enrique, this is a, a look at the Pew for, Institute. For look on. at the facts. Okay. There's facts. Thanks for telling us what you think. It was really interesting. Thanks. The majority thinks so. Well, the Trump administration held its first ever news conference today. Heroic brutality. You don't seem to have thought this through very much. I have to say. I've thought it through very much. Every single day, I think it through. I'm at the border almost every day. I spend so half my time in Mexico. I'm very familiar okay. with the issue.
you don't seem to have learned much, so would it be okay for the U.S. to make Martin Luther King Day and understand that Why do you always bring it back to race? I'm asking That's you about economics. That's where this economics. segment started, Tucker. You're the one who picked the topic. I didn't. I'm, I'm asking you about health care. I'm asking you about lowering drug prices. Joining them because they understand thin, This is not to very impressive. We have, have to said. resist. All right, well, good luck I with that. Think. Thanks. It was a high-energy event, to say the least. <laughs> totally. <laughs> But also <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we appreciate you coming on. We know how busy you are, and thanks for being straight up. I'm loving it. We're, we're, no, I don't get that. It's lovely, right? High energy.